Welcome to the next lesson. Uh, in this lesson, we will uh, assign materials to some of the uh, subtools or all of the subtools and uh, add some basic colors to them. Um, I will uh, quickly walk you through this and show it how to do it for all the subtools. Uh, that normally, if you change the material, all subtools would change uh, unless you uh, set them to it and then. Um, from that moment on they have that material it works a little bit differently than in Maya or Frida Studio Max but uh, let's have a look okay so here we got our um, object or uh, our model did a little bit more work on it and I'm gonna start with uh, the head and make sure that uh, we take one of the standard materials and not one of the matcap materials because they don't take the lighting information from the lighting panel um, so for the head I just take a skin uh, thing, skin <laughs> shader uh, and make sure that you set it to material and not to set add and then you do fill object which just fills it with that material nothing else uh, and as you can see uh, it now if I change the material here for the rest the, the head stays uh, with the new material so I can Chase, change the eyes to some sort of shiny material for now. Uh, I might go back and change that later into something a bit more uh, logical, but for now we, we hardly see him as long as it's shiny. And do fill object again. And from that moment on, you can see it uh, in the subtool panel. They have a different uh, shader. The hands will have the skin shader as well. So you see it's not uh, very hard um, when you select the shader it will just like the brushes uh, it will fast select in the top view there uh, I'll just give the uh, the pants a basic shader and later on I will show you how to assign fill them with colors as well and uh, well it's basically the same thing you could do it at the same time We're going to make sure if we want to fill in with color that colorizes on for polypaints. So let's say we want to change this to um, a little brown. Uh, and here I do fill object, which doesn't work because I didn't change my um, methods to mRGB, uh, which you will see in a second when I go through and I go like, hey, it didn't change. So here so I changed it to mRGB so it will change material and RGB so now I can do fill object and you can see it in the subtool palette it changed to black um, so now it works and uh, so I can change the shirt pants and stuff so it just becomes a bit more visible what I want to do Because I already filled it uh, previously, um, it doesn't fill straight. You, you can't see it straight away, so I uh, just have to fill it, and now it sort of locks in. And the same with the pants. No, you should really do this first before uh, straight fill it with uh, mRGB. But if you already got uh, some RGB in there, then filling it with the material is a, is a very uh, wise choice. This one didn't have one yet, so if I change it, I can see it straight away on the on the sleeves. So fill object, and it's locked in there. And I could just go around, and uh, on this one, I can change the material. Something a bit... <laughs> bit less um, shiny and you know you can change this later on but uh, it shows you how quickly you can go through and just uh, change the materials on your object uh, I haven't given the head or the hands a color because um, well I'm gonna I'm gonna do some painting there and I'll, I'll, I will do some painting on the on the shirt and the rest actually I might go back uh, into Maya and give the shirt and other cloth objects uh, a little bit of or a, a simple UVing uh, because then I can um, 
add some fabric texture to it, um, which I will show you guys as well, uh, and just make it look a little bit better. Because the folds is only one thing. The thing with the ah, well, here you go. You can change the the materials, make it more specular, and change the um, uh, the specular highlight of it. Just uh, make it a bit more interesting. Make the fall off larger. So if you want something very shiny, like uh, I want those leather uh, uh, belts to be, you can just uh, change your uh, material. And again, so I want the same material as on that uh, sheath of the of the knife, which is a very uh, diffuse material, which I might come back to later and change it because uh, leather is actually not that diffuse as I'm making it here uh, and I really don't like it that much but you know okay and that's almost everything for now uh, like the sword has to be metallic or metal and again with that I'll probably come back to it later and make it more interesting it's got to be nice and shiny, right? More reflective. Yeah, well, that's 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 good for now. Uh, the handles of the sword and uh, the knife will have to be a bit more uh, leathery brown as well, I guess. And then we got the the, the coppery bits of the sword and uh, the end of the the knife. At least I. I thought they were going to be copper, I don't know. Not going to do too much editing of uh, materials here. Uh, there is quite a few good materials to start with and uh, we can make we can make a nice image without going into that too much. Also, you know, it's already a long tutorial. Don't want to make it too long. And there you have it. Oh Assigning materials in ZBrush. Um, I will go back the next um, lesson into Maya and make a quick um, sort of touch up of the head um, just to fill in the eyes and the ears. And there's some heads, some some um, some gaps in the in the model itself. And then I'll show you how to bring it back in and transfer all the sculpting you've done to it. Um, also, I'm. Uh, I'll show you a cape um, I made quickly in Maya. Show you the base mesh. Maybe work on it a little bit, um, and maybe do a quick, a quick um, uh, UVing of the shirt, and bring it back in. Show you how that works. All right. See you guys next lesson.